Have you been watching Tidying Up with Marie Kondo on Netflix? Hi, I'm Amy, and on this channel, I talk to creative or right brain people about how to be more productive, organized, and successful in the kind of left brain areas of our lives. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you eight things I learned from reading Marie Kondo's book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, and talk about a few ways that those can apply to those of us who are creative. I often talk about business and entrepreneurship, but last week I started a series on organization because I found that many artists, crafters, and makers feel that being disorganized makes them unable to start their own business or to effectively run a small business. So if you missed last week's video, I'll link to that below. Now I don't claim to be a naturally tidy or organized person, but I'm here to encourage those of you who also feel that you're not naturally tidy people to learn strategies to help you be organized enough to do the things that you wanna do in your life, whether that's owning your own business or just enjoying your home. Marie Kondo's KonMari method has been strongly associated with minimalism since her book first came out a few years ago. And I think minimalism is a pretty far cry from where most of us creatives and right-brainers think of ourselves falling. And so the first thing I wanna say and the first lesson that I applied is that KonMari method is not the same as minimalism and you don't have to be a minimalist to apply these teachings. What she teaches is not that you shouldn't have any stuff or that you need to get rid of, you know, almost everything you own. She just says that you need to love and appreciate the things you have, keep the things that are useful and meaningful to you, and let go of the things that aren't serving you in any way. The second lesson is to tidy all like items at once. You pull it all out, you pile it on the bed or in the middle of the room, whether it's clothes, books, papers, or kitchen items, and you just see everything you have in one pile. Now this does two things for you. It shocks and embarrasses you to see the overabundance of stuff that you have. And we, particularly as artists and creatives, we are visual people and we need to see it. We need to see everything that's there to finally go, that's too much, that's just too much stuff. Sometimes you need that to really realize that you need to let go of some things. And the second thing that it does for you is it helps you find all your stuff. Maybe you've been keeping all these like things in five different areas of your house. Well, it's important for you to know what you have so that you can find it and use it. So it's, it's really good to pull it all out at once, everything that's in the same category. Lesson three is counterintuitive to some of us because we've been told to start with the hardest job first and get it over with and then everything will be easier from there on out. In fact, my husband has a saying to swallow the biggest frog first. Now in this case of Marie Kondo's method, she tells you to start with the category of things that is gonna be the easiest for you to let go of. It's still a big job to tidy all your stuff, so it's gonna be a lot of work, but she thinks that you should start with a category that's a, a little less sentimental to you so that you can practice letting go of things and by the time you get to the things that are harder to let go of, you'll be better at it, like anything else that you've worked on. So she suggests that you start with clothing, um, if that's something that is hard for you to let go of, maybe you find a different category that's uh, papers or books or something else that is gonna be a little easier starting point for you and then work your way up from there. Okay, lesson number four, run everything through the joy test. Now Marie Kondo has kind of taken a few hits on the internet, a lot of memes and funny things uh, being said about her wanting your items to spark joy or like my husband put it when he watched part of the show, you lost me when she started spanking the books to wake them up, you know? And I understand that, and especially people who are real analytical thinkers are not quite so down with this idea that, uh, that your items have sort of an energy or a life of their own. But most of us, I think most of us creatives and right-brainers, you know, we're, we're okay with that idea. At least we, we like the romantic idea that uh, our things can serve us and live with us and have their own little spirit. And so whether you believe that uh, your books can wake up and talk to you and give you an idea of whether they're serving you or not. That doesn't matter, but just question whether these things give you joy, whether they're useful to you, whether you are giving them a proper home where they're feeling used and loved, or whether you should pass them on to someone else who might use and love them more than you. Lesson number five, give everything a home. This one is hard for me to do. I have to admit, uh, as a right-brainer, that if something's not out where I can see it, it ceases to exist and a lot of you may be kind of wired the same way and consequently a lot of our drawers contain things that we never use and then our countertops and shelves are just littered with the things that we do use and they tend to pile up and get messy so what I suggest for those of us who are creatives and right brainers is give everything a home even if that home is sort of out where it's visible you know if it's on a shelf or in some open storage still give it a home and make sure you know where everything goes that way it has a chance of getting 
put back there at some point and being organized and being findable. So that's certainly important for you to be able to use things. So work within what you're able to do. Give things a home, but give them a home where you're gonna be able to find them and use them and remember that you have them. Lesson number five kind of flows directly into lesson number six, which is know what you have. And she suggests some, some methods for doing that are to use clear boxes for storage whenever you can and also to store things upright on end as much as possible so that if you open a drawer or you open a box, you see everything stacked up and you can see all of it at once instead of only seeing the one thing on top and then having a mystery underneath. Now you can, uh, you can Google Marie Kondo folding methods and find some videos to learn specifically how to fold clothing. It can really help you save space and she has some really cool methods for that. Lesson number six, was also about right brainers needing to see what they have and be able to see it quickly so they know what they have and can use it. And lesson number seven is don't spend a lot of money getting organized. You've gotta figure out a system that works for you. And sometimes we go to the container store or someplace like that, spend a lot of money on this thing we think is gonna work and it doesn't really work for us. And one thing I like that Marie Kondo suggests is just use shoe boxes and things you have in the beginning to subdivide your spaces and figure out what works for you. Don't spend a fortune, use what you have and just get it organized. She's very big on subdividing the spaces so that you can put things together that are like size and, and like use and that helps you find them and use them. But she doesn't, she doesn't advocate that you go buy some elaborate system. She's not selling you some big fancy thing. So use what we have and see if it works. And if not, you can change it and try to mix it up a little bit with something different and you aren't out a bunch of money. Lesson number eight is be gentle and thankful with this process and with the things that you're letting go of. Um, Marie Kondo says to thank your clothing for the way that it served you or any other thing that you're passing on or discarding. And while I don't think that my socks really care if I say thank you before I drop them in the Goodwill bin, the truth is this is a good practice just in the same way that Forgiving someone is something you do because, because it helps you. And being thankful for the things that you've had and that you're passing on helps you to notice and remember how very blessed you are and how much you have enough that you can let go of some of it and pass it on to somebody else. So be gentle and thankful. So those are the main lessons I learned from reading The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. And it's a short book, it's an easy read, so I highly recommend it. It, it can get you energized and, and ready to move forward with trying to tidy up your life. We as artists and creatives, we tend to collect a lot of things and a lot of clutter and periodically it is definitely time to kind of reassess and let go of some things to make room for new energy, new creative inspiration in our lives. So I wanna encourage you to do that. Now the final thing I'll say is it's fun and easy to sit around and watch a lot of videos about how to clean up your space and to watch shows about other people getting their lives tidy and organized. But at some point, you've gotta turn off the screen and get up and do it. So I'm gonna challenge myself and challenge you this week. Get up and do something to move forward in organizing your life and getting your space more functional to let in your creative energy and let your artistic light shine.